This camp, just outside Goma, is home to 11,000 people, most of them women and children displaced by the fighting. And it's in places like this that the food crisis is hitting hardest. So I've just been talking to Bushahi Remari, who's a wonderful woman, who's the foster mother of nine children. When the family fled from um, near Shuru with the fighting, her husband went one way and she went another way, so she's on her own with the children here. And um, the food rations have been cut recently because the World Food Prog Programme is, hasn't got sufficient funding. And um, so they only get six kilos and uh, before they used to get more than double that. Both of these children here were in the clinic um, earlier on this week because they have chronic malnutrition. Um, and now we're down to two meals a day instead of three and it's only going one way at the moment. So this is kind of the food crisis actually in action on the ground, hitting these families with the same kind of force and impact as any other disaster. It's much easier, I think, for us in other parts of the world to understand a disaster when it's something like a cyclone or a tsunami. Um, but this food crisis can have just as serious an impact, and this is just one example. The other thing that I'm also looking at is education, or rather the lack of it. It's really quite shocking to see all these children um, with, with really very minimal protection, and no one is doing anything about education donors either fall into you know, emergency response type donors who say education isn't life-saving or uh, donors who are more interested in long-term development and they say sorry it's not a stable situation and that means that education just falls into kind of a, a black hole that nobody's bothering with it but that's what we as Save the Children have committed to addressing. While in Goma I also met with Luke and Stefan who were kidnapped and forced to fight on the front line. <laughs> I, I can't even imagine what their experiences were like. Of the eight boys who were together to begin with, who were friends, two actually died on the, on the front line and two uh, lost their lives from just the difficulties of they were, the movements, they were carrying heavy loads. Um, it was a very tough life. Um, and they're explaining that the, there were uh, quite a number of children, actually more children in that battalion than adults. Um, you know, we want to get these boys back into school. And, you know, you just got to look forward and uh, be pleased that there is a system in place and that Save the Children can do something to make sure that they, they do actually have a future. Everywhere we work around the world, we focus on education for children who have been affected by conflict. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice to get this little girl into school. A bit. You can just tell that she's, you know, look at her. Look at that potential. We want to rewrite the future for these children.